Vice Chancellor, Professor Emeritus J.D. Anderson, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. My name is Bob Garrity and I'm the university librarian here at Monash University. After having to cancel two in-person events due to lockdown, I'm delighted to finally be able to welcome you all to the virtual opening of our new exhibition, The Perfect Migrant. I would like to start by acknowledging the people of the Kulin Nations on whose land I'm broadcasting from today. I pay my respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging. And with many of us joining from multiple locations, I also pay my respects to the traditional owners of the land from wherever you may be joining us. We're privileged this evening to have as our guest speaker, Professor Janie Anderson. Her talk will be followed by a musical performance by refugee, musician, and artist, Fistin Baraka, before you hear from Professor Margaret Gardner, President and Vice Chancellor, Monash University. We'll finish with some visuals of the exhibited artwork as a teaser to encourage everyone to visit the exhibition in person when we're out of lockdown, which hopefully will be soon. I'm very pleased to introduce Professor Emeritus Janie Anderson, educated at the University of Melbourne and Bryn Mawr College, Philadelphia. Professor Anderson became the first female Rhodes Fellow at Oxford in 1970 and taught, taught there until 1991. From 1997 to 2014, she was Herald Chair of Fine Arts at the University of Melbourne. And from 2008 to 2012, the President of the International Committee for Art History. In 2015, she received a knighthood from the President of the Republic of Italy for her distinguished research on Venetian Renaissance art. Her most recent works are 2019's The Invention of Melbourne and The Life of Giovanni Morelli in Risorgimento, Italy. Professor Anderson is also an experienced curator working on exhibitions at the Ashmolean Museum, Oxford, the Poldi Pizzoli Museum, Milan, and the National Gallery of Art, Washington. She is currently curating an exhibition on Giorgione for the Palazzo Reale Milan that will open in October, 2023. In the 2021 Queen's Birthday Honours, Professor Anderson was awarded a member of the Order of Australia for significant service to tertiary education, particularly to art history in Australia. Please welcome Professor Anderson. Thank you very much for that generous uh, introduction. I'm delighted to be opening this exhibition. And may I begin by echoing your respects to the peoples of the Kulin Nation, the traditional owners of the land on which Monash University stands, and in the context of Dr. Anne Holloway's exhibition, to honor their ancestors as the most perfect first migrants who created enduring legacies for all Australians. On one of the few occasions when Melburnians were allowed out of lockdown, I visited Anne's exhibition with her and I found it immensely moving. The impact that migrants in the 1940s had on my generation through teaching in schools and universities was quite considerable. Exhibitions in libraries always provoke something special, I think because of the intimate experience between objects and texts. And one of the teachers who meant the most to me at the University of Melbourne when I was an undergraduate was Franz Philipp, an Austrian Jewish art historian who taught Italian Renaissance art history. And in the exhibition, there's a very moving letter he wrote from Dakar, as well as his German poetry, revealing an inner self that was previously completely unknown to me. In a book I recently reviewed, Daniel Thomas's recent past, Daniel describes studying art at Geelong Grammar with Ludwig Hirschfeld Mack, another Danira boy. He describes this as a period of wild enchantment. For me with Franz, it was, a continual enchantment at the discovery of new worlds, mostly in Italy. My parents had taken me to Europe when I was 14. And from that point, when I came to university, I longed to know more. Dr. Holloway's exhibition explores migration as an artistic experience, taking the German Jewish artist, Erwin Fabian, as the central protagonist, tracing a link from his experience as a refugee in the 1940s until 2018, when Fabian responded to the plight of refugees on Manus Island. Fabian and his generation were known as the perfect migrants, hence the title of the exhibition, because of their contribution to Australian society, admiring in one period, but ironic in our own. Would we ever now describe a refugee as perfect? I met Erwin Fabian in 1970 in London, when I was a postgraduate student at the Warburg. I was introduced to him by Franz, 
As discussed in Anne's video, Franz was my mentor in art history. And Franz said to me, Owen oh, Fabian's rather good, I think. You might like to meet him. And this was very high praise from Franz, who was never given to exaggeration or flattery. Fabian was born in Berlin in 1915, the son of a landscape impressionist painter, Max Fabian, who died when his son was nine. In 1938, Fabian escaped to London, was later interned, traveled to Australia on the Dernier with Franz, and they became great friends. Unlike anyone else in the 1950s, Fabian moved with ease between Melbourne, London, and Berlin, exhibiting in all cities in rather distinguished venues. His work is always about finding imagery in man-made objects. It's never gestural. And I take this as a sort of revolt against his father, who was an impressionist. In my consciousness as an undergraduate, I knew that Franz and others who taught me were refugees, but it wasn't until I returned to Australia in 1997 and was invited to give a lecture in honor of Franz that I began to understand his biography. I'd known other Dunera boys without realizing who they were. One of my best friends at school was Mary Claire Adam, and her father was Leonard Adam, a pioneer in our understanding of indigenous art. At Harvard, when I was a postgraduate student in America, I was quizzed by Ernst Kitzinger about what it was to be an Australian art historian in a very sort of unusual, intense way. Um, and Kitz, as we called him, was the outstanding medievalist of my uh, generation. And I, he told me that he'd been in Australia once and I assumed for a conference. It was only later I discovered that he was a Dunera boy as well. In Paris, I met the photographer, Helmut Newton. We had the same publisher. And he told me he'd always kept an Australian passport as a symbol of freedom. And these exceptional people who were on the Dun era were everywhere. Then um, very recently, Shona Sparks' two volume work, Dun era Lives, um, was something I found most engaging. But for me, it was Dun era Lives. The 20 unconventional biographies in this book, which is associated with the exhibition, resonate with my experience of growing up in Australia. Writing my lecture in honor of Franz in 1998, I realized how his generation of immigrant art historians had fallen in love with Australian contemporary art. Whether it was Franz writing about Arthur Boyd, Ursula Hoff on Charles Condor, or Joseph Burke on Drysdale and Nolan, Sadly, none succeeded in writing about European art as well as they did with their writings on Australian art. When writing the lecture, I was intrigued. I tried to imagine what it would have been like for thousands of very intelligent, well-educated Europeans to go to Tatura. So I drove there with my husband and we looked around, a bit perplexed. And then in the Tatura Museum, we got the answer. They made exceptional works of art, even with the most limited resources. Fabian's monotypes in the exhibition are a case in point. And I quote how he made them. I put up a board between the bunk and the window. I must have managed to get an old window of some window glass and some printing ink used in the office for duplicating. I spread the stuff with a bunched up piece of cotton on glass. So these works of art were really quite extraordinary and, and very powerful, but just very minimal too. My first impression of Fabian in 1970 was of a sculptor who made witty, ironic collages, found objects, whatever the medium. He appeared uncharacteristically indifferent to fame or to promoting himself. He felt no pressure to succeed, perhaps because his wife, Pat Gray, was very wealthy and coldly disinterested in him, more preoccupied with her relationship with Manning Clark. Fabian's works were always collected by major institutions, beginning with Daryl Lindsay for the National Gallery in 1947, and later for the Berlin National Museum and the British Museum and many others. His work has proved continually attractive to intellectual art historians, beginning with Ernst Gombrich, who describes in one of the most widely read art historical books of all time, Art and Illusion, from 1960, a witty poster by Fabian of an industrialist reading the Financial Times, a cover to one of the Penguin books, and these are displayed in Anne's exhibition. Recently, my colleague Jane Eckert described Fabian as one of the most important sculptors in Australian history, but there is something always elusive about him. He's not yes a household name. 
In conclusion, immigration seems to be a hot topic. Uh, the Getty Research Institute has just advertised a call for scholarships for 22 to 23, should anyone wish to apply for a year in LA, and the theme is art and migration, interpreted in its widest sense. I wish everyone at Monash a continuing success with the exhibition, for at a time when Australia's borders are shut and an ever increasing number of people are displaced around the world, it's important for us all to engage with the humanity of refugees, past and present, no matter their place of origin. I hope that there will be some permanent online publication that records Anne's exhibition. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Anderson. It's more important than ever to bring people together online through the power of music and the shared experience. You're about to see a musical performance by Fistin Baraka, also known as Baraka the Kid. Born in the Congo, for seven years, Fistin and his family were at Lusaka camp in Zambia, south of the Congo, before his parents applied to the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. Currently, Fistin is an up-and-coming pop, hip-hop, Afro-pop, and R&B artist based in Geelong. He also works with the North Youth Theater, a Geelong-based theater company. Drawing on his experience as a dream chaser, Fistin wrote, recorded, and mastered in his bedroom his first ever studio album, Revo's Dreamer in 2019. It was released under his own label, Black Viper, Black Viper Records. Baraka the Kid can be found on Spotify, Apple Music, and SoundCloud. He will be for performing tonight, Better Life. How many times did I wake up for the night? How many times did I wake up for the night? How many times did I cry all night? How many nights did I stay up all night? Can I get myself a better life? Can I get myself a better life? Can I get myself a better life? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ooh, yeah. How many times did I wake up for the night? I could have lost my goal, I could have lost it. I could have lost it all, I could have lost it How many times did I wake up for the night, yeah How many times did I wake up crying on my knees Yeah, 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 yeah Almost lost my soul Till I found it all I never thought I could Times that I wake up for the night, yeah. Wishing that it wouldn't be the last time I saw the light. Thanks to God, I saw the light, yeah. The future wasn't looking so bright. How to put up a fight just to make it for the night, yeah. I'm the leader on my team, like the dark night. I was fighting for my dreams, I was fighting for my life, I was fighting for my goals, yeah. Kinda lost control, so I had to let it go, dang. In this life that we're living. In this dream that we're chasing, that is what it seems, yeah Fake friends trying to come between me and yeah, my dreams, yeah We all trying to win, trying to make something of ourselves in this life Gotta hold on tight, until you set a light Everything's gonna be alright, yeah Gotta light and you're shining bright All you gotta do is light it up, yeah And let it do its part Underneath the second star says I'm trying to make it Trying to make it, yeah, I already made it Uh, yeah, I already made it Yeah How many times did I reckon for the night? How many times did I wake up for the night? How many times did I cry all night? How many times did I stay up all night? Trying to get myself a better life. Trying to get myself a better life. Trying to get myself a better life. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I could've lost my goal, I could've lost it. I could've lost it all, I could've lost it. Can I get myself a better life, yeah? Can I get myself a better life, yeah?
Thank you, Fiston. Your message is inspirational. You almost lost your soul fighting for your dreams, for your goals, and for your life. Keep chasing them, things will turn out right. It now gives me great pleasure to call on our Vice Chancellor, Professor Margaret Gardner, to officially open the exhibition. Thank you very much, Bob, um, for that introduction. Um, can I also um, begin, oops, I can, um, apology, apologies to the audience. I thought I'd clicked on start my video, but it didn't start. So thank you, Bob, again, for that introduction um, and good evening to everyone. I too would like to begin by acknowledging the people of the Kulin Nations, the traditional owners of the lands on which Monash University campuses stand and to pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. It's my very great pleasure to welcome you to the official opening of the Perfect Migrant Exhibition, albeit not in the perfect <laughs> format that we had hoped for, although it is one that is unfortunately all too familiar to us. Despite the current lockdown here in Melbourne and the ongoing challenges and uncertainties we continue to face as a result of the pandemic, I'm still very pleased we're able to hold today's events, even if it is in this virtual manner. Um, I'd also like to start by thanking Professor Emeritus Janie Anderson, not only for joining us today, um, but for the speech she has just given to introduce this exhibition. We are all of us aware of the erudition of Janie Anderson and she has much to say about art history and how we might understand it in our world. But in this case, it was wonderful to hear not just her erudition, but her personal passion and reflections about her experiences with those with whom she was engaged, who were from Danera, and reflecting on the particular um, impact of Erwin Fabian, uh, who's featured in this particular exhibition. I cannot match Janie's erudition, um, but I join with her in urging you to come and see this exhibition when, I hope it will be soon, you are able to venture onto our Clayton campus and into the Sir Louis Matheson Library, which is where it is. Let me talk a little bit about the exhibition. I think The Perfect Migrant is captivating, but it's also in some ways confronta confrontational portrayal of forced migration. It features the artwork and stories from internees from the uh, HMT Danera and the HMS Queen Mary, um, and all of them were imprisoned in Australia during World War II. In July 1940, when the Danera and Queen Mary departed the UK and Singapore to make what is a very long sea journey to Australia, carrying almost 3,000 internees, many of whom were Jewish refugees from Germany and Austria, I think nobody could have predicted the end of that particular journey and the stories that emanated from it. As Janie and others have said, today internees from both ships are regarded as perfect migrants for their contributions to Australian society and culture. And you could hear in Janie's reflections how their very significant impact post the Second World War fundamentally shifted the experiences of so many people and in fact, Australian society and culture. Nevertheless, they came to Australia in a position that was equivocal and vulnerable. They were refugees, enemy aliens, and they became citizens, migrants. They formed a part of our story, but they had many of the experiences of migrants and internees and what it feels to come being called an alien to another culture and make a life there. The perfect migrant tells their stories. And I want to acknowledge at this point that this particular exhibition um, in the Sir Louis Matheson Library follows the success of a previous exhibition 
um, which was held in 2019 before the lockdowns called Return, The Way Back Home, which included Sir John Monash's um, contribution and his particular contribution in returning the Australian Imperial Force in very short order in the most well-planned deployment that had ever what <laughs> was made in that war of forces back home. And in this case, the Australian Imperial Force to Australia, which was accomplished um, well uh, short of the time that was allocated for it. And in that exhibition, we heard the stories of those people caught in that horrible war and what that meant to them. The artefacts on display in that exhibition represented the realisation of what a journey home from the war entailed for those soldiers and indeed um, nurses who served uh, also overseas in that period. And in fact, the ongoing challenges and sufferings they experienced upon their return. The perfect migrant is actually telling in a different way some elements of a similar story. Yes, it's a story about a journey. Um, in this case, it's uh, the journey of the Daenerys and Queen Mary, but the exhibition speaks to that story through the artworks of Erwin Fabian, who, as you've heard, was an internee, but also an extremely talented visual artist and sculptor. The artworks reflect Fabian's per personal experience, including his time at sea, his imprisonment at Tatura, his life as a new migrant, and indeed his responses to images of the men, women and children incarcerated on Manus Island and Nauru. So the perfect migrant is a very important story being told through these artworks. It's the result of the dedicated and collaborative work of Dr. Shoma Spark and the Daenera Lives Project, which as Janie said, should have been called Daenera Lives Project, which is uh, in the School of History and was engaged with the Monash University Library Special Collections. Students worked on this exhibition. Five Master of Design students specializing in multimedia and interaction worked with library staff to design and build the digital elements of the exhibition as part of their final year project by animating and bringing the artwork to life. So I really want to extend my warm congratulations to this talented group, um, the historian and also the students who worked with the library staff for, for their dedication and tireless work. Um, it wouldn't have happened without uh, the exhibition curator, Dr. Anne Holloway, who's once again captured such remarkable stories and delivered them with the respect and the compassion they deserve. And I might add with the insight, um, truly congratulations, because what this perfect migrant tells us is something very important about our history and their history but as she says herself, the exhibition also reminds us of the adaptive capacity of people to rebuild their lives and start new journeys when they're given a chance. And that's the thing we need to remember in Australia, that it has been giving people a chance that made such a difference to their lives after the traumatic journeys that many of them made here. Through moving audio installations, creative projected animations, thought provoking film work, and most importantly, the artwork of contemporary Australian refugees, visitors to this exhibition will experience and understand how incarceration and forced migration has such a significant impact on refugees and their families. As we've said, I strongly encourage you all to go and see the Perfect Migrant exhibition for yourselves. And I thank you for joining us today. And I want to thank all of you who are joining us today, who I can't see in person, but I know out there in the audience, apart from the wonderful people who've brought this exhibition to life, we also have people who are family members of those who 
were interned and traveled on the Demira and Queen Mary. We have scholars who've made significant contributions to the understanding of this period, these people and their work. Um, and so I wanted to say, I'm so pleased you could all be with us. So I'm delighted to now officially open the Perfect Migrant Exhibition and we're going to show you a short recording, which as Bob Geraghty said, gives you a sneak preview into what to expect when visiting the gallery. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vice Chancellor. This is a special exhibition for the university and the library is honored to have the opportunity to commemorate the legacy of Ir Irwin Fabian and to celebrate the lives and art of those who came to Australia on the Dunera, the Queen Mary and through current refugee and asylum programs. I'd like to thank all of you for joining us this evening and encourage everyone to undertake a curator's tour of the exhibition as restrictions ease. The tours of the gallery located in the Sir Louis Matheson Library, Clayton Campus, are available by contacting our special collections team. Contact details will appear on the screen in a moment. Thank you again and have a lovely evening.